church. We would like to have you here. Welcome to church. We hope you're blessed. Welcome to this first Sunday of Advent. Uh, so glad to have you here. <laughs> I am not wearing this hat. <laughs> but I will wear this one. Welcome to church, friends and family. Welcome to Advent. We're so glad you're here. Welcome, friends of God. Come on in for worship. So glad you're here on this weekend following Thanksgiving. And however you spent it and with whomever you spent it, I pray that it was a day of gratitude, giving thanks for what God has done for us and lifting up our praises just for who God is. Come on in. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent, the time that we wait and prepare for the Savior's birth. Our worship series this year is called Company is Coming. And so we're going to be getting ready for just that. Jesus to be born again and anew in us and through us into the world. So a couple of things to know about Advent is that Christmas Eve service this year will be one service at 7 p.m. here in the First Methodist Sanctuary. We will also have a beautiful worship prepared that will premiere at three o'clock on Christmas Eve and can be watched at that time or any time later as you gather with family in your homes. We know that Christmas can be a painful time. Um, there are many losses that we all experience throughout the year. And so we offer a blue Christmas on Monday evening, December the 14th at 7 p.m., a time to gather and Take note of what has happened through the year, a time to be authentic and to grieve losses of all kinds, and also to celebrate the hope of Christmas. We hope that you'll join us for all of the Advent festivities this year. May you be blessed this morning as we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Savior. Welcome to worship. heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor
star shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem the wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you and to the place at which you were the frankincense and gold and myrrh they gave to you Make planes divert their flight paths. Tell the mountains to duck and rush into this sanctuary. Come, come Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. Come and silence the violence. Stop stray bullets that kill the innocent. Expose, expose dealers who peddle addiction. Make your enemies know you and tremble in your presence. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. We may fail to notice your presence in everyday living, in casual conversations, or in blessings disguised as coincidences. Still we cry, Come, come Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. We light the candle of hope, knowing hope has come to us today. Done. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Sunday of Advent, and we want to take some time uh, as we enter into December and the craziness of, uh, well, we've entered into the craziness of a holiday season. Um, I want to take some time for prayer and to reconnect and ensure that our heart and our soul and our mind, and we're, we're in the right place to uh, to welcome the Christ child back. Uh, welcome the Christ child into our lives. Um, as we prepare for for Christmas, as we try to figure out what it looks like for a Christmas of COVID, especially um, in a time of COVID, we need prayer. So will you pray with me now? Lord, we come to you on this day and we give thanks. We just finished our, our holiday Thanksgiving of celebrating life and, and, and the gift of life and, and all the blessings that, that are upon us. And Lord, we recognize that in the midst of, of this time of celebration right now, being separated from family, being separated from loved ones. It's it's hard and it's difficult. And so sometimes you may not feel like, like celebrating. Lord, may we lean into you when things get hard. May we trust you to work in our lives, to shape our hearts and mold us so that your glory is foremost in our thoughts. Lord, may we recognize that even in times of of hardship, you're there and you're present. Lord, we, we prepare ourselves now, these next few Sundays, as we move towards Christmas, 
may you work on our hearts so that we are a giving people so that we can be what you want us to be. We don't get trapped in our own heads, Lord, but uh, we open our hearts and our minds to you to guide us so that we recognize your blessings, so we recognize your, your love, and we can see the good in the world. Lord, let us be an optimistic people. Let us trust that you are in control and you are moving us forward. And even those moments that where, where we end up taking steps backwards, where we feel like things aren't going like we hoped, um, when we're uncertain about our future or the future of our loved ones, even uh, if, where jobs are at, or um, Lord, may we may we lean into you. We ask that you open doors so that we can be your people to others, so we can be the light that you call us to be. Lord, just as they, just as in Isaiah, uh, they called out to you. Lord, we're calling out to you to come in our midst and be with us as we worship, as we live out our life, as we make, as we make decisions. Um, come be with us. And may we have the heart the ears, the eyes, to see you working in our life and in the world around us. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for uh, sending us your son so that we could learn from him and be a bit more uh, like Jesus. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Hello. Today is the first day of Advent, and this year our worship series is called Company is Coming. I'm preaching today on this place is a mess. Let me show you what's going on in our sanctuary. We've got some dirty dishes, some food crumbles, some newspapers, empty boxes, tea mugs, socks and shoes, laundry baskets, and a beautiful wintry scene outside. Maybe that's just how your home feels. I think with about 10 more pairs of socks and shoes, it would look like my entryway. Advent is a time to prepare our hearts. Jesus is coming to be born again. What is needed for the babe of Bethlehem to be born in and through us? That's our Advent question. Isaiah 64 provides us a lens for preparing for Jesus in the midst of the mess. Let's look for just a moment at the historical context 
and what was going on for the Israelites um, in Isaiah 64. It was a time that they had returned from exile in um, Babylon after the Babylonians had conquered um, them. And the return home was not the glorious restoration that they had hoped for at all. Upon arrival, they found an enormous mess. The Babylonians had destroyed the temple and left it in ruins. A famine ensued and brought along with it poverty and distress. Businesses went under, families were strained and struggling. It was a harsh reality. The people were exhausted from the toil. They were longing for what they had been missing, they were longing for things to be normal again. They were overwhelmed trying to cover the immense needs. God felt absent and they needed reassurance that God's presence was with them and that God loves them. Does any of this feel familiar to you? Do you resonate with any of it? The Israelites' disorientation? I know I do. We're in the midst of a global pandemic that has claimed the lives of 263,000 of our fellow Americans and nearly one and a half million people worldwide. All of us have been touched by it in daily life. COVID is a heavy blanket that's layered across our shoulders on top of the normal daily stressors that really were plenty before COVID came. We might feel a little bit overwhelmed, lost also, wondering where God is like the Israelites. I'm hoping we can find some words of hope and inspiration from the prophet Isaiah today. Isaiah attempts to remind the people of God's saving acts and at the same time is speaking that as a reminder to God and hopes of calling forth God's compassion to repeat those saving acts. Let's look, let's look at some of the verses individually. Verse one, the prophet shouts, burst from the heavens and come down. When we're in distress, we cry out, come God. We're anxious to know that you are here. As chaos engulfs, um, we want God to be with us. So in chapter 63, just preceding this, the prophet says, look down on us, God. But here in chapter 64, um, the prophet is crying, come Lord, tear opens and come, we need you, God. And in verse two, the imagery of God as a divine uh, warrior uh, coming to save. In Near Eastern literature, these fierce images were common for the divine warrior coming to prepare for battle. Fire burns, water boils, the mountains quake. And then God, and then the prophet asked the people to remember the saving acts of God, what God has done before. You did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations, Isaiah says. Even the mountains quaked. The prophet is saying, remember, God has acted to save before. People, remember, God, remember. No ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you. There's no one like you. So why is Isaiah looking back? because Isaiah knows that the collective experiences of ages past, that's what grounds us in our identity, in our individual identity, in our collective identity. That's why the word of God, scripture is so important. It is the overarching collective experience of God's people over time. We look to it because it's the story of our ancestors. It is our story. And likewise, their story, we see our own in, and our story is there within theirs. We are grounded by looking back, and that's one of the reasons we do that each year in Advent. We look back and tell the story to ground us in the Savior's birth, the hope 
the light and the joy that we all need so. In verse four, the prophet talks about those who are following God and says, God is the one who works for those who wait upon God. Hmm. So how can we prepare our hearts? How can we wait upon God in Advent? Well, one answer is prayer, deep prayer, continual prayer, prayer without ceasing. We can be still, we can listen for the Holy Spirit of God. We can wait upon God by serving, serving others, giving of ourselves, sacrificing. We can serve God by our praise and by our worship, and especially this time of year, by offering up our thanks and gratitude. There are all ways we can open ourselves for God to act again. Another way for us to um, wait upon God in Advent is repentance and confession. And Isaiah talks about that too. Verses five to six talk about the sin of the people of God. Now that's a hard one to look at, but we need to sometimes in order to grow. It's tempting to skip these verses on sin, and believe me, I thought about it. You know, it's Thanksgiving and sin's kind of a downer. Just the idea of sin often brings guilt and shame for most of us. Generally, we're all pretty quick to see our faults and slow to see our gifts, and we all feel horribly enough about ourselves. Still, a small voice inside of me said, talk about sin. So I opened up to do some reflecting on it. Something good happened. For the people of Isaiah, it feels like God is absent, and that leads to sin. Where are you, God? They cry out in their searing pain. You hid yourself, and we transgressed. The reality is that people lost sight of God, so it seemed as though God was hidden. They were desperate for any kind of help in this mess they were in. So they turned away from God and, and toward idols, anything to help them cope. Idols seem archaic, but really they're very relevant today. The definition of an idol is anything that separates us from God or anything that we place before God. It can be our financial comfort. It could be our job, our work. It can even be something like our family. Anything we place before God becomes an idol in our lives. So the Israelites are in this time of soul searching, in this time of questioning. How can a people like us be saved? Our sins sweep us away like the wind, and that happens to us too. We live in a mess. Confession has, this confession has a powerful impact. Confession washes us clean of the prideful thought that we can save ourselves. When we slow down to reflect and to repent, we realize it's beyond us. And so we must fall upon the mercy of God. As Amy and Angie recorded the hymn, Change My Heart, O God, this week, something hit me. So often when we talk about sin or when we think about it, it's guilt and shame that rest with us. And that's not what God wants for us. That isn't the focus God wants for us when we take stock of our soul and spirit and where we are. What God wants is truth and for our hearts to be changed, for our hearts to be renewed, for us to be reformed in the image of God. That is what repentance means, people of God, to recognize and to accept that we're in a mess and we've created a mess. And then to confess that to God and lift it up. And what can God do with that? Recreate us and mold us anew as the potter. 
If we choose, Advent could be a time of waiting for God to show us where we need to grow. People of God, here is the hopeful message that Isaiah had for his people and for us. We live in a mess, and yet, and yet, God meets us here in the mess, and God loves us here in the mess. Hallelujah, and thanks be to God. The theological underpinning here is that God is faithful, and God always arrives to save. Thanks be to God. Even in the mess, we are called to care for and serve others this Advent. And so in the mess, how do we do that? How do we welcome the Christ who comes? How do we welcome not only friends and family, but the stranger that God places before us? We want to welcome with the hospitality of the innkeeper who looks around and says, this place is a mess and there's no more space. But yes, come on in, I'll make a place. Um, when Jeremy and I were newly married, we had an experience that illustrated making some space in the mess. We came from different traditions um, of the Christian faith, different denominations. I grew up Southern Baptist and he grew up Christian Church Disciples of Christ. And we weren't really sure what to do about a church home. Um, neither of us wanted to go to the other uh, and we needed a place that we could feel comfortable. Uh, and true confessions here, I was just fine with that, but secretly I was going to pray Jeremy into my tradition. Well, God had a little giggle about that because we ended up at Arlington Heights Christian Church in Fort Worth, and this is how it happened. We went to worship one morning and we met another young uh, newly married couple named Jay and Amy. They said, we're so glad you're here. Um, what brought you here? And thanks for coming. And would you like to come to our house for some lunch today? We said, sure, we don't have plans, we'd love that. So we went to their house and immediately upon arrival, we realized that they were not really prepared to receive company. Their living room had, well, it looked kind of like our chancel looks, newspapers and coffee mugs and laundry baskets because they were in the middle of living when they left for church and didn't know they were gonna have anyone over. As a matter of fact, they didn't really have enough food. We went in the kitchen and we ended up putting penne pasta with bow tie pasta just to make enough pasta, poured sauce over it and just used regular sandwich bread toasted with some butter on the side. Jay and Amy weren't really set up to receive the guest, but you know what? Their hearts were set up to receive the guest. And that was one of the most hospitable and abundant meals that I've ever shared with new friends. And I give thanks to this day for that. Advent, what are we waiting for? And how will we receive what comes? Advent reminds us that we long not just for a remembrance of something that happened in our history, although that is good and can be filling for us as well. Advent reminds us that what we long for, what we hope for and wait for, is a new reality, an encounter again anew with the living God. And this is where observing the historical event of Christmas is so important, where telling the story again is so important. We tell the story not just so that we can look back at the blessing, but so we can recognize it when it comes again, people of God. The task of Advent is to pay attention to right now, what is, but also what might be. And when we're able to take this overarching biblical view of the situation, we realize that we are not alone. What we see right here and now is not all that there is. It may be a best, but God is right here with us in the mess. And when God meets us and loves us in the mess, then guess what happens? We are transformed. We are molded like clay in the potter's hands. Hope and renewal are born. And what do we call it when something new is born? A baby. I pray that we'd all be blessed in the waiting and the hoping and the reflection of Advent this year. 
Thanks be to God. So as we said before, you know, things just don't always work out the way we want it to. Life is messy, right? But, uh, but Christ is here, right here in that mess. So may you invite Christ into your messy life, into the details, into the small things, into the big things. May you allow God to shape your heart, to transform you, to move you away from sin, and may you experience the blessing of renewal and resurrection. May you go in peace. Amen. Thank you.